What's up everybody? It's Broken Bones here and welcome to Broken's Bedrock Tutorials. Today we're going to be showing you how to get Bedrock the block in 100% survival. I did just release a method on how to get Bedrock in 100% survival, however this method is a brand new method and much much simpler and easier to build and use. And this is all thanks to It's Me James, he figured this whole method out and did a tutorial. And this is his tutorial basically and I'm going to do it over on my channel because this is some very useful information for all the redstoners out there. Getting bedrock is very hard to do, and this is a guaranteed way to get it upon every attempt. You get four bedrock pretty much on every attempt, and it's very easy to do it. I'm going to leave a link to his tutorial up in the top right hand corner right there, and I'm also going to leave a link to his channel down in the description. I highly suggest going over to his channel and leaving him a sub and liking the video. The guy really knows what he's talking about. And if you guys are enjoying today's video, be sure to break the like button for me, leave a comment down below, share this video with all your friends, be sure to subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss more videos like this one. This farm is extremely simple to build and extremely easy to use. All you have to do is prepare some bedrock down below. As you can see, we have some dirt and that's to grow some dark oak trees. That's how you remove the bedrock. That's actually a pretty easy process. It's a little timely, but with some time, you can do it pretty quickly and it's really not that bad. Then once you have that done, you can place in your uh, doors just like this. And then the rest of the farm is pretty much a lever, some redstone, two pistons, two doors, two hoppers, and two chests. That's pretty much it. That's, that's all you really need for this farm. You do need to run a lag machine, which over here I have a lag machine. I'll show you how to build this in the tutorial. And over here, as you can see down here in our storage area, it is completely empty. And right now I've, I've got two doors in there from doing it last time. But as you can see, I've got 19 bedrock in my inventory and our storage area is now empty. So let's go ahead and use this farm and I'll show you how to use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn on our lag machine. And as you can see right now, before we turn it on, there is no lag. The sand falls pretty easily and that's a good indicator if there's lag or not. And as you can see here shortly, we're going to go ahead and turn this on. So if we turn that on, now it's going to start generating some lag. As you can see, it's going to take a second before that sand falls. And the longer this stays on, the more lag it's going to generate. So now, as you can see, it's going to take a few seconds for that sand to drop just like that. And it's going to continue to build, which is what we want. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use this farm. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to place an end crystal right here on this obsidian. And that obsidian is there so we can do that. And we're going to go ahead and place in an end crystal there and an end crystal over here and one in the center on all sides just like this. And now what we're going to do is, as you can see down here, our doors right there, here when we place this crystal, they're going to disappear. So let's go ahead and go check that out. As you can see, the bedrock formed in and it looks like the uh, doors are disappeared, but they're kind of still there. And if we flick this lever here, as you can see, the doors kind of popped off right there. We're going to place in two more doors right there. We're going to break this crystal out right now. Let's go ahead and break that. And then we're going to go ahead and flick this lever one more time, just like this. And then we're going to go ahead and place in it two more doors just like that. And that'll make sure that the bedrock doesn't form again. And if we look in our chest, as you can see, we successfully got four bedrock and two doors. There's really not a whole lot to say about this farm. It's very simple and easy to use, and it works very well. <laughs> That's pretty much all I have to say. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. A material list will be down in the description. To get things started, you are going to need to kill the dragon. Once your dragon is dead, then you're going to want to head and mark out your project area. This is going to be on the west side, and there's a couple ways of doing that and making sure that you end up on the west side. First method is with an empty locator map, and as you can see, if we look at the map, our cursor is pointing up, which is north. If we turn to the left, which is west, as you can see, our arrow is pointing left, and as you can see, we're on the left-hand side of our portal right here. If we turn backwards, you can see that's south, and if you turn to the right, that's east, just like that. So that's one way of telling. The other way of telling is using a pumpkin. If you place a pumpkin down, you can see that the stem points at the northwest corner. So if that is north, then you know this is west. And then over here, you can also use a sunflower. If you place down a sunflower, you can see that the yellow part of the flower always points east. So you're going to want to make your area, your project area around this portal on the back side of the sunflower, just like this. And my favorite way of doing it is just looking at your coordinates. If you look at your coordinates up in the top left hand side of the screen right there, if you go north, you'll see that your coordinates become less. As you can see, I'm going into the negative further and further and further, and that's because I'm going north. I definitely recommend getting used to using coordinates. It's the easiest, best way because you don't need any of these other items with you. You can just do it with your coordinates. And as you can see, as I'm moving, it is getting less and less. And therefore, as you know, if that's north, to your left is going to be west, to your right is east, and behind you is going to be south. 
So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and measure out this area on the west hand side. You're gonna to come to the north side, just like this. You're gonna to come to the left hand side of your bedrock right here. You're gonna count out four blocks, one, two, three, and four, just like that, as you can see. You're gonna dig that area out just like that. Over here, you're gonna go ahead and come up to the west hand side. You're gonna come right in the middle. You're gonna count out six blocks, one, two, three, four, five, and six just like that so you're going to want to dig that trench out just like so go ahead and dig that all out just like that and then over here on the south side you're going to want to come to the far left hand side just like this and go ahead and count out four blocks and dig that all out as well and once you have that all dug out then you're going to want to dig yourself a trench all the way around the outside just like this connecting all those lines up once you have that marked out, you're gonna come over here to the north side, you're gonna come right here to your bedrock. And as you can see, we're one block below our bedrock block right there. From this point further, you're gonna count down seven blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, just like that. And then you're gonna go ahead and dig out your entire marked area. Once you have this dug out, it should look a lot like this. And during this process, if you guys wanna go ahead and light it up, go ahead and do so to keep these endermen away. I highly suggest doing this. Go ahead and light up inside your hole and light up all the way around if you want to. You don't have to do that, but I recommend it. So once you have everything lit up, then go ahead and come over to the north hand side, this side right here. We're gonna come to this diagonal block just like this. We're gonna walk out to the west side just like so. And right here in this block down here in the bottom, we're gonna go and land right there and place on ourselves a dirt block and place in one there and one there and one there. So now we have ourselves a square of dirt right in this area right here. So this should really match up right here just like that. Just right there, that's exactly where we want our dirt in comparison to the end portal down below. And then what we want to do is we want to extend this dirt all the way to this side right here. So we're going to go ahead and bring this all the way across here like so. One, two, three blocks just like that. And then that should go ahead and line up with the edge of the portal just like so. Next we need to go ahead and remove the bedrock planting dark oak trees on the dirt that we just placed in it. So go ahead and grab your dark oak saplings and some bone meal. Go ahead and place your first set of dark oak saplings here on the left hand side and go ahead and bone meal that tree and you should see that it pops up and you have a chance of breaking the bedrock. Let's go ahead and see if we broke the bedrock. If you fly up on top right here and break all the way down, let's see if we broke some bedrock. As you can see, we broke one bedrock block right there. So you're going to mine out your tree and continue this process until you have all that bedrock broken out. Once you've broken some bedrock, go ahead and move your next tree up by one block. So go ahead and use this whole pad of dirt until you've removed all the bedrock. I'm about halfway through the process now and I've removed all the bedrock on this side. However, we need to remove these three bedrock down here. We don't necessarily need to remove these two bits of bedrock, but we do need to remove these three. So I'm going to continue until we have that done. At this point, as you can see, I've only got one more block to remove. So I'm going to continue to do that until I have all the blocks that I need removed. Let's see if we get it on this one. It does look like the bedrock was removed right there. Look at that. We got ourselves all done and dusted, so we're gonna remove all of our wood, and now our farm is ready to be built. As you can see, my last tree took out a little extra bedrock, which is just fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you have these blocks removed, that's what matters. So once we have that done, we're gonna come right here to the center. We're gonna come right down below. We're gonna place in a piston right there on the side of that one, and one to the right of that one. Then we're gonna come out by a temporary block just right here, and a temporary block right there. Place two hoppers facing down just like this, and then below those, go ahead and place two chests just like this, and then that'll be our storage system. Go ahead and break out your temporary blocks up here, and then on top of these hoppers right here, we're gonna go ahead and place in ourselves some doors just like this. There we go, place in two doors. They can be any kind of doors, that doesn't matter. And once you have that done, we're gonna build ourselves a little bridge right here. So go ahead and come down below your chest. Go ahead and place in a block down there like that. And then we're gonna come over by two blocks just like this. We're gonna come up by a block right there. We're gonna go ahead and build this up just like this. Go ahead and build yourself a little staircase that'll get you all the way out, just like so. Here we are, all the way there like that. There we are. Okay, and actually if you want to, you can go ahead and make this come out by one more, just like this. Here we are, make that come out by three, just like so, that'll actually be better. And then once we have that done, we need to wire up our pistons. So go ahead and come back here, back by our pistons. Go ahead and come down by a block right here. Go ahead and come out by two, three, and four more, just like that. Come one to the side, place a lever on top of that one, and then place redstone dust behind your pistons all the way back to your lever over here. 
Once you have all that in place, go ahead and come to the top of your door right here. Go ahead and place in yourself a temporary block right on top, and then go ahead and place yourself an obsidian block outside just like this. That'll be right in the center. That'll be so we can place our first crystal for the first time. And then once we have that done, now we need to go ahead and build our lag machine. For this next bit, you are either going to need a chunk mod or your coordinates up in the top left hand of my screen, just like I have up there. And you can use chunk base for this if you like, although I'm going to show you the coordinates that you need right here in the tutorial. As you can see right here, the center of the end portal right here, this bedrock pillar, this is at 0, 0. If you look at the top left hand side of my screen, it says it's 0, 61, 0, which is X, Y, and Z. So I'm at 0, 0, X, and Z. And what we want to do is we want to identify the chunk that's off to the left hand side right here. We're going to be in the southwest side over here. So that's the chunk that we want to identify. And in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and come right over here, dead center with our line right here. We're going to back all the way up here. As you can see, my X coordinate is turning uh, into negative 15, negative 16 right here. Negative 16 is the block that we want. So you want to identify that one, make sure that you're on the correct block, which is negative 16 and zero right there. So this is our block that we want. And once you have that identified, you can go ahead and place two pistons next to it just like this facing south. Go ahead and break your original piston and place it in there just like that. And once you have these in, we're going to go ahead and back up to the south just like this until our coordinate gets to 15 at Z just like that. So now we're at negative 16X, 15Z. We're going to go ahead and mark this corner just like that. So this is our block right there. On this side, we're going to go ahead and place a piston right there. Two more on this side and we can go ahead and break the temporary block behind it. Once you have your two sets of pistons in, go ahead and grab some magma blocks and some soul sand and what you're going to do is you're going to alternate rows in between just like this and go ahead and alternate that all the way across leaving one gap here at the back so don't place blocks here, leave that one empty, you're going to place them all the way up to here. Once you're all finished, it should look like this and next what we're going to do is we're going to place in the sides. So what we need to do is we need to come down here. Go ahead and place in your sides. You can use any block that you want. I'm using endstone because you're going to have a lot of endstone from digging this out. So once you have that in, go ahead and do the other side as well. Go ahead and place this in just like that. We're going to go ahead and make this block too high just like so. Go ahead and bring this all the way around. And then on the back side of the pistons here, go ahead and place in some blocks right there as well. Place in more blocks right here. And then on top of our pistons again right here. Then from this point forward, we're going to go up by seven more blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we're going to build that all the way around. Once you have this all complete, go ahead and place a torch on top to keep the Enderman off. And then what we need to do is we need to fill this in with water. And one of the easiest ways to do that is with ice. If you have some ice, either that or grab yourself a couple water buckets and make yourself an infinite water source. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and place this down here right on that side and go ahead and place it all the way up on this side just like that. Make sure you have water going all the way up. Go ahead and do the same thing on this corner right here. Go ahead and bring that all the way up as well, just like so. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and place in water all the way up in this corner, just like this. Go ahead and place it in there, all there, just like that. And then every other block, you can go ahead and place in a pillar of water going up or ice, and then you can break it. And you'll see that it'll go ahead and create infinite water sources once you get to the end. Once you have all of your water in, it should look just like this. Once you have that filled up with water, grab your redstone dust. We're going to come to the pistons back here. Go ahead and place in redstone dust like that. Come to the side here. Go ahead and place redstone dust all around the side. If you have any torches in the way, go ahead and break those out. And then go ahead and hook up these pistons there just like that. Grab yourself a repeater and some around here in the middle. Go ahead and break one bit of redstone and place in yourself a repeater. And then back over here on this side, we're going to go ahead and place in ourselves a sticky piston. Break one block out just like this. Placing yourself a sticky piston like that. Place your lever on the side just like that and uh, power that one. And then go ahead and place yourself a redstone block right there. Anytime you depower that, you'll see that it starts to flash just like this. And that'll take care of both sides. And as you can see right now, we are causing some lag, which that's not sand, that's endstone. <laughs> so if your lag machine is off, you should see that your sand falls just like this. So I recommend checking it with that. And then if you turn it on, you should see here in just a few seconds, it's going to take a second or two for your sand to fall here shortly. And as you can see, there it is. It's starting to take a little bit of time to fall. Let's wait for it. There it is. Now it's going to stay up there for a few seconds before it decides to fall. So the lag is going to continue to build and now we can use our farm. 
Once you've got your lag machine built, go ahead and grab some end stone. Go ahead and come right over here and just kind of build a little blast shield for all of your redstone dust there so it doesn't get blown up. Once you have that all in place, go ahead and grab your crystals and your doors and a piece of sand to go ahead and check the lag. Go ahead and flick your lever on. Go ahead and double check the lag. You want to make sure that that sand block sticks up there for a couple seconds before it comes down just like that. That means that there is some lag building, which is good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get started on getting some bedrock. So as you can see down here, our storage system is all empty. You're going to need some crystals and some doors. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come right over here to this obsidian block. Go ahead and place yourself a crystal on top of that one. Place yourself a crystal on the center block of all of the sides here just like this. And on the final one, we're going to place that one in here just like that. And it's going to look like, the, like our doors just disappeared. We're going to flick this lever, flick it back. We're going to crouch place ourselves some doors right in here just like this, just like that. Then we're going to break this crystal right here. Go ahead and break that out. And then go ahead and flick this lever one more time just like this. Crouch place some more doors on top of these hoppers just like that. And if we take a look inside of our chest here, we did get ourselves three pieces of bedrock and three doors. Every three or four attempts, I recommend turning this lag machine off. Go ahead and turn it off and let the lag calm down. As you can see, there's still some lag even though we turned it off. It's kind of residual. And as you can see, that sand block is not dropping for quite some time now. So go ahead and let the lag all go. You'll notice that the sand falls once the lag goes away. There you go, once the sand is broken, go ahead and pick it up and then double check it. You can see that the lag is now gone. Then once the lag is gone, go ahead and turn your machine back on and make some more attempts. To do this multiple times, you simply just rinse and repeat the whole process. So go ahead and turn on your lag machine here. Go ahead and make sure that your sand is sticking to the wall. Once it starts to stick to the wall, then you know that you're starting to build some lag. Once that's happening, go ahead and grab your crystals and your doors. We're gonna go ahead and do this all over again. Go ahead and come up here, place in yourself a crystal in the center block over there. Come over ahead and around here, place in a center one there, another crystal there. And on the final side right here, go ahead and place one in there. And as you can see, it looks like our doors have disappeared. We're gonna go ahead and uh, flick that lever there and go ahead and place in our doors back there just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and break this crystal there just like so. Looks like our doors disappeared again. We're gonna flick that lever and flick it back again. Go ahead and place our doors back there just like so before the uh, bedrock forms again. And now we should have ourselves some bedrock down in our chest here again. Here's four pieces of bedrock and two doors. And with that being said, I hope you guys found this tutorial nice and easy. I'm sure most of you guys could manage doing something like this in your own personal worlds. It's not that hard to do. It's actually very practical and very easy. And then you guys can get yourself some bedrock and make yourself some wither cages or whatever else you want to make out of bedrock. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. And if you did, be sure to smack the like button for me and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next tutorial. Take it easy, everybody.